It's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> you need five. Oh, five. Yeah, okay. So five. commerce, education, and uh, the... Um, uh, uh, EPA? EPA. There you go. No, okay. <laughs> It's still not easy to watch. That was Rick Perry back in 2011 when he made his first run for the Republican nomination. Some say he may have made up for that oops moment yesterday during that rally in Dallas, but the media seems to be stuck on that exchange. And I mean, we showed it. Joining us now to talk more about this is Eddie Scary, a reporter with the Washington Examiner. And Eddie, it's great to have you with us to talk about this today. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, so you came out with a new article yesterday shortly after Rick Perry made his announcement. You point out that the media was quick to pounce all over Perry's uh, oops moment from the 2011 Republican presidential debate. Is the media making a bigger deal out of this than it really is? Well, that's right. I mean, I, th I think every single report, just about every single report in every national paper on Rick Perry's announcement uh, referenced his oops moment as something that came to define his campaign, you know, came to suggest, I guess, that he didn't have the intellectual have to be president. Um, and I don't, I don't know that voters actually felt that. It was kind of a funny moment during the debate, but the media certainly remembers it. Well, I mean, I think they remember it because it was pretty much the beginning of the end of the Rick Perry campaign. And we point out that moment, but there were other issues issues that Perry had. And I want, want to talk about one specifically that some folks might consider another oops moment. That's when he went toe to toe with Mitt Romney over the issue of Social Security and the IRS. Let's take a listen to that. Anybody that's for the status quo with Social Security today is involved with a monstrous lie. Our nominee has to be someone who, who isn't committed to abolishing Social Security, but who's committed to, to saving Social Security. That may have been the moment or one of the moments when Romney, you know, really jumped out even further in the lead there. Uh, Rick Perry is going to have to answer for that as well. How does he come back from his gaffe on Social Security? Yeah, I mean, I think he has a lot to answer for, really, which is why, you know, since 2011, when his campaign basically imploded because of his debate performances, um, he's been, you know, the reports have said that he's been studying, reading up a lot on foreign policy and domestic policy. He now wears uh, black glasses. <laughs> um, I actually spoke to, uh, this is about a year ago, I spoke with uh, Representative Louis Gomer, also from Texas, who said, who suggested to me that he wears glasses uh, to make himself look smarter. So um, I think there's going to be a different guy this time around. He's at least going to come across a little bit more intellectual, and we'll see if that actually works for him. Uh, the glasses may be working for him, and I think he's able to wear uh, boots again, maybe, since he had that back surgery, and a lot of folks point to that. Uh, and, he, and, and Perry, if you look at his, uh, his team surrounding him right now, and there's some pretty big names and some uh, names you might not expect, like Avik Roy, uh, who's participating as well, I think Perry made a lot of folks forget about those gaps yesterday with that speech and he's trying to hit on his military experience as well which could benefit him but let's talk about one more thing too that uh is affecting uh rick perry's run for the president uh, run for the white house i should say and that's that indictment still hanging over his head we heard earlier from or we're going to hear shortly i should say coming up from uh tom delay who said this could be a factor because when it comes to donors folks not, might not want to give uh to a man running for the white house who still has an indictment hanging over his head that's possible. I mean, no one wants to be paired up with someone who might uh, have something criminal against them, obviously. Uh, but, you know, when that indictment actually came out, uh, pretty much everyone on the left and right, uh, political commentators, both liberal and conservative, were saying that it was a wash and it didn't seem like anything. So it's possible that that's going to be, a, uh, you know, a dent in his campaign, but uh, there's a good chance that it won't be. Yeah, I guess uh, with Washington Post, it cuts both ways because that was a moment where a lot of folks said that uh, Rick Perry was being persecuted by this DA. And she doesn't look so good either when that video keeps getting played of her in the drunk tank. Eddie Scary from the Washington Examiner, thanks so much for being with us. Always good to see you. Thank you. All right, Rick Perry in the presidential race. Ten people running for the White House on the GOP side. More to come here on Newsmax now. We're back right after this.